Yo, this is Princella the Queen Maker, also known as Auntie from Fresh and Fit. Yo, I just did an interview with Real Life Street Stars. Go ahead and follow them. would love to get your take on the female rap industry oh god so they say they them the mm -hmm. say that um behind the female rapper is a man mm -hmm. he's writing the music he's creating the look mm -hmm. he's projecting the image mm -hmm. um and it's not necessarily the image that a man would want to maybe marry or mm -hmm. to have raise his children. Right. Um, but it is over sexualized, a lot of nudity, a lot of profanity. Um, what's your take on it? What are your thoughts? Well, it's definitely done by men. I mean, if you ask a man if he was a woman for a day, what he would do, the answer is give all my homeboys some pussy. I, no, I'm serious. Be, be, wow. I'm, I'm serious. They have said that. Right? Wow. <laughs> so in their mind, right, they project, right, they create the female for the male fantasy, right? It doesn't matter what the woman wants. It's all done for the male gaze, right? And it's, we, we blame the women but in actuality, they, a lot of them don't have creative control. I know when I was rapping, right? When I was quote unquote going to people's studios, oh, well, I can help you, do, I can do this. They always wanted to turn me into this like whore type image. And I'm like, <laughs> that ain't me. They tried to do it to young M.A. Y'all see how young M.A., she's straight yeah. hood. But when she was, when they first came, they tried to make her, they put her in a wig and tried yeah. to make, they, that's the that's what they do. Yeah, music is sexualized. Yeah. Um, you know, just yeah. the way music is. Yeah, but it's run by men. So it's what are your thoughts when you see like the city girls bringing like over sexualism in it, like basically what they call pussy power? Well, it's a it's a false it's a false idea of quote unquote pussy power because what they're actually doing is promoting women to continue to go out there and have sex. That is not the power of pussy. The power of pussy is limiting access to it. And sexual freedom and sexual power for the woman is being able to realize that you have the power to reject and deny, not to just go willy nilly. Oh, I did this. I got wet ass pussy, this, that and the other one. So it's just another alternative to push people on the lower echelons to keep having sex to produce slaves. That's really what the ultimate objective is. So, you know, I'm not for the city girls or the, the WAP. I'm not for all of that because it's a it's a destruction of the of, of the female herself. It sound good for quote unquote feminism, but it's really a detriment to the woman. What are your thoughts on the idea of in order for you to touch this, I'm going to need some money. For you to get my number, I'm going to need some money. And if you want to lay with me, I'm going to need some money. Before we can go on a day, I need some money. <laughs> well, <laughs> I need some money. <laughs> okay. Here's the, here's the reality of it. Men pursue women. You only, you only want something because you ain't got it, right? And you only pursue something because you want it. People pursue that which is of value. Men come to take Women have resources. Women are a resource to men. I don't know any resource that's free. I don't know no food that's free. I don't know no success story that was obtained for free. I don't know none of this equipment that y'all got for free. None of it. Women are just like this equipment, right? Men compare women to cars all the time. I, last time I looked, you had to purchase a car, right? So the only thing that men actually have to bring to the table is finances they want something from you it's better that you charge them for it as opposed to giving it away under some ideal love so baby cat send him your cash app could you say a woman will choose a man because of his information for his information 
Well, it's possible. It's possible. In the pimp and whole world, that's the that's the game. Yeah. Okay? That's the game. But the game has been flipped. A lot of times the male, every dude, every pimp know that the woman don't need them. They got to sell her that he got something that she can capitalize off of, off of her resources, right? He has to sell that to her. And typically what they try to sell is protection. Meanwhile, the hoe is really on her own. All pimps know this. So the woman is manipulated to believe because you can only run this game on a woman who needs something. She has to need something. If she don't have no weaknesses, it's hard to sell her on that. But if you got two struggling people and you got to do say, hey, baby, come on. Listen, man, we can go out here. You, you can get this money from these niggas. Go fuck this nigga. Go do this. I got some game, some wisdom that can make you get the most value out of your body. Right. So being in a state of need, she may do that then. But it becomes much harder to do that with a woman that ain't down there. See, now you got to have a little bit more cash because you can't be no bottom feeder ass nigga going up to no bitch rolling in no damn Rolls Royce. You know, you got to have some bank. Men know this. They we, know this. We've seen women with money take an ex-con straight out of prison mm -hmm. and get digmatized mm -hmm. over him having nothing. Mm -hmm. She said, I just need you here. Mm -hmm. Now, mind you, she's still the dominant. Like, she still right. run her, she run a business. Right. She got an escort. She, she doing her thing. Mm -hmm. But she come home and in the bedroom, she might become the submissive. Mm -hmm. She might allow him to, you know, mm -hmm. uh, you know, do your will. Mm -hmm. And then she turns back into the boss she is. Mm -hmm. Now, when you see that, where a man is still needed for, you know, like you said, it's only money that we're needing. Some men don't come with money. They come with other things. Like, you still need a man around. Like, who's going to kill that roach? Like, seriously. Who's going to kill that rat? Listen, man, I just, I had a, I, listen, I had a wasp nest oh, the, built, and it was like seven of them out there. Who you think killed that shit? Because I ain't got no men around. I had to go out there and kill it. No, nah, fuck that. I went out there. <laughs> <laughs> Look that, right? You know, and, and I'm like this. The male want to be needed for some basic ass shit like killing a roach and opening a car door. <laughs> like, <laughs> no, no, we're here to get dirty. Women are pretty things. They don't want to, you know, they're not about to go out there and get cut up and run and get stung by hornets and nothing like that. Men don't mind them blows. We're not, we're not pretty little things. We don't mind getting <laughs> Shit, dirty. I can't and... tell how y'all all on goddamn social media these days. I mean, that's pretty not Ricky, what they call them, right? <laughs> I mean, they're different men, you know, different times, but in the old school, in the, in the I don't want to say the natural order of things, but in the old school, in the old law, mm -hmm. men will go out there and get dirty mm -hmm. versus a woman wanting to get dirty. Woman normally was wanting to stay feminine. You know, there's a feminine nature about y'all that just want to stay feminine. If, that's a production, man. Is because, it a production? No. Yeah, because see, now you got to go back to how they promoted this, because if that's the natural way you let, let, let me let me run it back real quick. Let's define nature first. OK, because that's the problem that nobody ever. We never start off. What the hell is nature? Let me tell you, nature is the path of least resistance. Anti-nature is the path of most resistance. It's natural for you to go to sleep when you're sleepy, right? That's easy for you to do. It's hard as hell for you to stay up when you dead dog tired and you got to coach yourself. You got to drink stuff. You got to turn the AC all the way on to do something. Anti-natural means that you have to teach, coach, train and force against your natural behavioral patterns. If that was natural, the conversation wouldn't be women need to get back in their place. Women need to do this. You need to stop acting so masculine. You need to stop this, stop that, stop that. We wouldn't have to have that conversation because naturally women would just be sitting looking like pretty logs. But instead, women want to be bosses. They want to they want to put in energy, effort. They want to do all of these things. You know why? Because that's the nature of a woman. Right. Nature of a woman is not an inanimate object just sitting there looking pretty. When you go back to the 1950s, you'll see articles 
trying to promote the housewife cooking and cleaning. This is all a production. Take all of the lights, cameras, action. Take all of the laws away. Take the laws away because law and law enforcement is used to govern and control human nature. Take it away. And what? Where does the water go? Where does the water flow? That's the natural path. When women start acting in their natural behavioral patterns, guess what happens? It threatens men's existence because men depend on women to survive. They depend on women to survive. And this is what makes men fight against each other so that you can pass your genes along and go conquer the territory of a woman and family. And you can say, ah, ha, nan, nanny, boo, boo. I got my family. I got what about you? Because it's every man for himself in reality. This patriarchal system makes it seem like there's a community of males. Men are not communal. They are competitors. Women are communal. Right. And women do the majority of the work in every field. It's women that they, and it's a scientific fact that the most successful men were influenced by a woman. It was a woman behind him. Right. That's a fact. Women do the majority of the work. Work. They're doing the clerical work. They doing all of the, the mind work. They're doing the moving, moving things to make things successful. But we try to erase that reality. Women have a duality about them that allow them to do so many things. Right. It's my natural path. I'm not doing something that's anti-natural. I'm not trying to compete with no man. I'm just naturally a hustler. I'm, I was dead lifting 300 pounds when I was, you know what I mean? I was maxing out my push-ups on the male scale. It took 75 push-ups for men to max out their push-ups. It only took 50 for a woman. I was maxing them out on the male scale, right? I was running a 15-minute two-mile, right? I just wanted, I wanted to do the army. I just have a desire to do physical things. This ain't got nothing to do with competing for a man or, or competing with a man. The fact of the matter is, is like this. Men say women supposed to do all of this. OK, well, when I was out on the street at 18 years old and I ain't had nobody to turn to, was I supposed to go run to a man and say, help me so you can pimp me? Or was I supposed to was I supposed to thug it out and on my own willpower and do something right? We don't ever think about the situations, people, and we just want to judge them. This world is not set up. For people to sit and rest, you got to fucking go get it. So do you believe that true love, real love can exist between a man and a woman? No, men are not capable of love. No, men are incapable of love. This is my whole this is my whole thing. So it's your whole spiel. Yeah, that's my whole spiel. Men are not capable of love. Men are codependent by nature. By nature, they are codependent. Scientific studies even show that boys are attached more to their mothers than girls. They are more emotionally reactive. They need more care. Boys are much harder to raise than girls. And men have a problem with ever. <laughs> you could, yeah, I, hey, I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm going to do y'all a solid. Y'all it's out there. Google, Google fragile male. Um, it's a. Um, it's a um, PubMed article, research mm. in the government's database, research, fragile male and testosterone and aggression in okay. men, right? Men are codependent by nature. It takes more to care for a boy child. Now, if that was not true, because I know I know he about ready to say something. If that wasn't true. <laughs> Nobody would keep saying, well, it's the single mothers raising the boys. Men know boys are harder to raise than girls. You know that boys need control mechanisms. And if you don't control them and when it, that, that testosterone start kicking in something in the brain. Men, males do not respect women or the authority. You need some male or quote unquote alpha male to control that testosterone in that male child. That's a fact. Males are harder to raise than girls. So because of that, they are codependent. If you don't kick a male out of your house, he's going to get lax and that that cord is going to stay attached. 
And he's going to be looking for women to replace his mother. If you don't, he's going to be upset. Men have to sink or swim, right? And because of that reality of the male, it prevents him from ever getting into a higher place of love because men operate from the waist down. Power, ego, and sex is what motivates the male, not love and companionship or none of that. Ego, sex, and power, period. It don't go no higher than that. And love does not exist in power, ego, and sex. Love is a higher level concept that men have no, they don't have a concept of that. That's why they say, well, men, we don't love like a woman love. We want respect. We want respect. The man can't tell you nothing besides what he want from you. It's always, we want this, we want that, we want this, we want that. That's his only conversation. I'm just curious. Did you have a dad in your life? Yeah, I did. Okay. I, I said, as a matter of fact, I said, talk to my dad. And, and your mom? Yeah. So you was raised all the way up with your mm -hmm. mom? Mm -hmm. my yeah. dad. See, <laughs> see, what y'all looking for, see, what y'all looking for is subjectivity, okay. right? My dad, like I told you, my dad is was military. He was in the military for 20 years, Navy, right? And I had a mentor also at 16 years old who was a political activist, right? The majority of people who I've been around have been male, right? What we want to have is a subjective conversation that, oh, you know what? You only think like this because you didn't have a dad in your life. You didn't have no positive male role models. This ain't got nothing to do with me personally because the evidence and the research is out there. I listen to males every day. I hear y'all talking. We won't respect. Let me tell you, all the male talks about is what he need and what he want. It ain't never about what he gives. Just listen to a male. Just listen to him. Is that love? If I come to you and say, hey, I want you to do this, I want this, I want this, I want this, I want this. Do you feel love if I tell you everything that I want from you? I'm speaking to you specifically. Oh, specifically, oh. I'm, I'm not anybody you're talking about. Oh, no, no, about. no, no, I was, talk I was talking about the lady. Oh, yeah, oh. yeah, because she, she, she yeah. I'm so sorry, can you repeat it? Yes, um, if I came to you and just told you everything I wanted from you, right? I want you to keep your mouth shut. I just want you to be in the kitchen. I want respect. I want this. I want this. I want this for you. to be. Would you feel loved? No. Men always tell you we don't love like a woman love. Let me tell you something. It ain't but one love. It ain't a million different loves. It's one love and men ain't capable of it. Get back here. <laughs> yeah, no. So my question was, so you feel like a man cannot be in love with a woman? It's no, he can't. No. So you don't think a man has never loved a woman? No, no, no. <laughs> well, the thing, let me ask you this. Do you think love is a feeling? Well, yeah, I want you to explain what your definition of love yeah, is. Because, yeah, because the majority of people think love is a feeling. Love is not a feeling. Love, love is an action. No, it's, love is not an action either. Let me ask you this question, right? I'm probably giving away too much game. But let no, me, we need let me, no, 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 seriously, right? Let's, let me give you an example. If you go fishing, right, the key to fishing is give bait, right? Yeah. Give something to get something. Yeah. You giving the fish, that's an action to give because one of the five love languages receiving gifts. If you give somebody something and your intent is to trap them, to deceive them and lure them into a place. How do you know if the action that is being performed unto you is an action rooted in love or deception? How do you know that? How you don't know? Right, right. So love cannot be an action in and of itself because actions can be deceptive. Facts. And they, right. they, the, the meaning and the intention could change. Uh-huh, okay. right. So love is not an action either. It ain't an emotion. So what is love? But see, here's the thing. 99% of the people on planet Earth don't have a clue what love is. Love is not a concept of the heart. Love is a concept of the mind. And it has everything to do with your intentions behind the actions. So 
the male's intention of the woman ain't never about what's beneficial for her. Everything that he does is for self gratification. Ain't never got nothing to do with what is mentally, emotionally, or spiritually beneficial or fulfilling for that woman. Everything that a man talk about is I want to strip everything that you are at your core away and make you somebody that I need. That's what males do. I want a wife. And I want this wife to do this, this, that, be this, be that, be that. Fuck what she is at her soul level. Fuck that. That ain't what I want. I need this woman to be what I need her to be for me. And when a man's needs change, guess what? His woman changed too. And just to be clear, we're speaking on all men, yes. not just black men, all not just men. white men. All, all men. men. I, a male is a male. Color ain't got nothing to do with all males have testosterone, all males have competitive nature, and all males are acting in survival of the fittest, right? It's about who can survive. That's what that's their life. That's their life. Don't matter your ethnicity, your race, or nothing. All males. So well, hold on, real quick. So a kid, let's just say, you know, and I hate going back to nature. Yeah. You know, a kid learns, he gets an erection, a girl, you know. She has a first period. We're getting into nature things. Like, okay, now we're she's able to conceive children. He's able to, you know, ejaculate and put babies in somebody. A kid could go into a situation, or let's say a young man could go into a situation loving a woman based on affection, saying, I want the best for her, and I want the best for me, and I want the best for us. I want us to have a family, and I want the best for her. But here's the thing. Here's yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, I, I, listen, I, I'm listen. coming out of me going into us. Mm -hmm. You're saying there's no scenario where a man wants for the woman to win. No, for the most part, no, because it's always about what benefits him. See, men want to mark territory. Can you love a woman enough to let her go and do her own thing without you trying to sabotage it? Can she leave you and you be okay with it? See, the male no. wants to own women, right? You can give her territory. Right, right. No, no. Y'all want to own women. Y'all want y'all want to collect women. That's what y'all want to do. I want to collect resources. Ooh, I got me one. Mm -hmm. How many you got? But you ain't got more than me. This is this y'all behavior. Y'all, it takes a. It takes an elevated mind. The majority of males could never be a pimp because a, a, a pimp has a level of discipline where he has to be like, OK, I'm going to lose you. OK, because he came and knocked my hoe. I'm not going to even though he might be mad and like that was mine. He has to overcome those feelings and be a quote unquote gentleman player and be like, that's the game. I can't get mad. The average male can't operate like that. Do you understand how much overriding of emotion that the male has to do to be like, OK, you knocked my hoe. Right. A lot of override. A lot of override. override. Right. Y'all can't do it because y'all want to own women. Y'all don't see women as human beings. <laughs> y'all see them as tools and, and, and resources to collect. Right. I wouldn't say it was easy for the woman to let the man go either. Mm -hmm. So a woman can't just take her L either. When she loses her man, she got to go over to the girl house and fight her. Uh, well, that's, pull a pistol on her. No, well, <laughs> well, see, but that that yeah. again right there is dealing with a psychological uh, a psychological brainwash where women have been brainwashed to really believe that they need men, right? At one point, women was passing men around. The male was the original hoe, and women wasn't loving these hoes. Every what, what, yeah, what was that? yeah. What, what was that? <laughs> <laughs> listen, what BC <laughs> listen, listen. Y'all know, y'all know. Listen, y'all know that too. Come on, man. Y'all know that Tupac line. Come on. Since we all came from a woman, got a game from a woman. I gained from a woman. What did he mean when he said we got our game from a woman? Y'all came from us. Everything that y'all implement, y'all took from the nature of a woman. Women were a community and they chose the most fit male and they passed your penis around and a lot of them got pregnant. And then if you if you was up to par, they kept you. If you wouldn't, they let you skedaddle. They just took the seed. 
And they didn't love them hoes, but at some point. <laughs> you said, it, I'm having a hard time raising my girls. Way, it's, way, it's way easier to raise my boys than my girls. Mm -hmm. So why do you why? Because you are a male and you have a male mind that is easier for you to, to be in line with, with your, your male child. What you're trying to do is be a male trying to, trying to understand female children and trying to mold them in a way that you think female children should be. The problem is, is everybody's trying to operate outside of their jurisdiction. The female, if men all day, man, women too complicated to understand. Here's a book on how to learn women and it be this damn thick. The male does not have an understanding of the female brain and behavior. His jurisdiction is male children, right? So yes, you may find that more difficult because you are not a woman. Your jurisdiction is your sons. Right. And then we project our idealistic view and behavior on what we think people should be. And we try to force them into that instead of a, instead of observing them and understanding who they are and facilitating the growth of them. Right. Yeah, you can shield them from this crap world we in because it's all a matrix, right? You can shield them from that, but you don't shield them by trying to make them acquiesce. You got to put them on game. Wait, do you feel men should like be in the household? You sound like, you know, men should come drop off a baby and leave or something. Like. Well, that's but here's the thing. That's y'all nature. Damn. I mean, but, but, but that's it's a benefit if we're no, there. No, baby. That's y'all's nature. Y'all need to be in the field. Y'all need to be in them trucks going away for going three hunt, weeks. Going to hunt. Going, going to hunt. Bring back the food. But that's that's the nature of a male. The problem is, is we're trying to make men be something that they're not. Y'all are uh. not operating at y'all's top game and your highest level of functionality because they're trying to socialize you. And guess what? Testosterone don't fit in the household. Hence the reason why they doing everything to lower y'all's testosterone levels. Look at the past 50 years and look at the difference between men then and then men now. Y'all's testosterone levels are intentionally being lowered, okay? Because it does not integrate in community well. It is a competitive in energy where y'all are lone star warriors. You either die or you survive out there. But you said the last 50 years and, uh, you know, looking just being in America, mm -hmm. uh, women, you know, technically they didn't have the rights that they did. They couldn't vote. They were they were put to be in a position. Mm -hmm. You f I'm, I'm going off of just your thought process. You feel like early on, let's say when America was first formulated, it should have been ran by women and men were understudy or s uh, servants of of women. Well to build this Well, here's the thing. Nation. Again, this matrix patriotism. Well, here's, here's, no, 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 no. You got it because no, see this because you're talking about America, but all of that. Here's the thing. Patri patriotism. Patri means father, right? The the prefix patri means father. So, you being patriotic, you're supporting male rule because that's what that means. Patriarchy means male rule. OK, or father rule. That's what it literally translates into. OK, so coming to America. Remember, America is built on stolen land. This is a corporation. The natives here that were originally here, they operated in line with nature. They were matriarchal. Right. Patriarchy created this dysfunction. Right. Because they put men in a position they were not naturally meant to occupy. Men need to be controlled. They need commands. When you give a male freedom, freedom that he did not earn. When you give a male freedom that he did not earn, he does not know how to handle it. Because with more knowledge comes more power. With more power comes more responsibility. And all of that is, the, is connected to freedom. Men don't want responsibility. They want power with no responsibility. It don't work like that. But y'all don't know. Y'all men do not. The average male does not know the responsibility that comes with power and freedom. 
he's reckless. And then he goes and creates multiple babies. And then when he does that, who does he blame? He blames the woman because you took women's rights away and prevented them from being able to actually make decisions and reject you. You sold them on being married to men, which uh, which which poisoned them and allowed them to let you knock them up with a bunch of kids. Yeah. And now you got a bunch of people in the world who are weak because you got weak males who would have never passed their genes along had women had the power to reject them. Now we just letting any old Tom, Dick and Harry create a child. Now you got a bunch of retarded people out here that wouldn't be here. <laughs> That's just the bottom line. I've been watching like a lot of like throwback uh, shows and movies like uh, Old England, Queen Charlotte type okay. situations where, you know, you're in these situations where, you know, these two kingdoms, they marrying off these kids. They're getting you know, married in the first couple of weeks. You know, she's due to be pregnant. You know what I'm saying? She needs to produce an heir, so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like it was worse then? Or made more sense than the way things were set up? Um, well, you got to realize that everything, everything was set up to get us to where we are right now. All of it, right? So the overpopulation of the planet, the, the famine, the wars, it all began with the anti-natural setup, right? So it doesn't matter how far you go back. I remember when I was in college, I had to write a paper and I was the only one in the class that made an A on this paper. It was a sociology paper and I had to write about communism and socialism. And basically at the end of the paper, the whole thing was about there is no perfect system. All of these systems fail. And the reason why all of these systems fail is because they all go against nature and they manipulate things and make things worse than they were in a completely natural environment. So everything is when it's dealing with patriarchy and, and, and collecting humans and selling them and, and doing all of that, all that's anti nature. And it was all started and set up to get us to the point we are now. And they can no longer sustain this. And so that's the reason why they have a depopulation plan. That's the reason why things are going chaotic because they are dismantling these old structures because they don't work no more. Do you believe uh, the man should be in the household? I think he should be connected to it, but I don't think he should be living there, no. Can you, can you break that down more why he shouldn't be living there? He shouldn't be living there because the male by nature was not meant to be in the community because that energy that y'all build up that has to be expelled somewhere but if you're not doing sports that's why i tell women i'm like y'all trying to, to there's nothing wrong with y'all wanting to play basketball and be in all these sports but men need sports this is a biological need for them because if y'all don't have an outlet if you in the house who where is all that energy going it's going off on the woman in the house is going off on the children. It's a dangerous thing to have a man in the house. He needs to be out expelling all that energy. So no, he don't need to be there. The house needs to be run by women and not just one woman. All this work, all this labor was not created or designed for one woman to carry. It was designed for multiple women to carry. And then the male can have a connection to the house, but he ain't to live there. Maybe he could spend a night, but most of the time he need to be out doing something. So what are men good for in your work? <sighs> Y'all really want me to answer that? Yeah, no, I really want your answer because, you know, we're, we're going through this and I'm like. I hate, I don't want to bruise you all ego, but the male was created to be a slave. Oh, OK, OK. Yeah, yeah. Because, no, seriously. No, I'm, I'm, I'm being serious because how do you think the matrix got built? Because, see, construction workers are slaves. Architects are the creators. Mm -hmm. There are very few architects in the world. Y'all watch the matrix. There was an architect of the matrix. We live in the matrix. The architect, right, made slaves to build it. It created the plans. And it took bodies and built it, right? That's what it is. So construction workers are the slaves to architects, right? 
So your physical body is what they needed to control. Other than that, y'all are good for dying for somebody's wars, right? You, but that's the truth. Look out. Look out and see what you see. Y'all are good for performing. Y'all are good for sports. Listen to these football players and, t and, and see how they talk about how they treat them there. They treat us like slaves, right? Mm. I'm telling you the truth. The male was created and bred to be a slave. And the more of y'all exist, they have to make money off of y'all somehow. So put you in football, put you in sports. And it's good for you because it's, it's a win-win for you and them. You get money, you get your ego stroked, and you get some pussy. But that's it. It sounds it sounds like you have like the, the mindset of like an ant colony. Like where there's a queen and then the males are just drones building the hill where the queen is to produce. She picks the male to reproduce with and then makes more of the colony. Did you know that the colonies was actually female and the, the males are nothing but like kind of flying sperm? It's the, the colonies are run by women. The worker ants yeah. are women. And so are the, the worker bees, they are female. Yeah. The drone is nothing more than uh, a seed giver. That's it. That's it. No, but that's the truth. And so the fact of the matter is internally, the male knows this. He knows it. And so this is why his ego is so fragile. This is why he need external stuff like money, money, cars, everything else to give him a sense of value. Patriarchy is so hard to break the male from it because patriarchy did something so cold. Patriarchy stroked the ego of the male. He can't let it go because in his mind, I'm, I'm made in the likeness and image of God. So yeah. I'm curious, have you always been on this? Hmm? Like this mindset from when you were a young girl? No, actually, actually. I did a lot of study because I started out pro-black, right? Okay, okay. Yeah, I was in the conscious stuff, yeah, okay? Yeah, yeah. Right? So when I was brought into consciousness, when I got out of Christianity and I read the Bible and I said, this is bullshit, and my mentor brought me into some consciousness, I read the miseducation of the Negro. I read Message to the Black Man. I, I read um, a lot of different psychology papers, right? I read, I've been into all of the religions, right? And in this pro-black thing, you know, Umar Johnson came out and, yeah. and, and, and Brother Polite and all that. And I'm analyzing this. See, I am a thinker and I'm an analytical person. And what I started to notice, I say, you know what? Pro-black don't mean pro-black. It mean pro-black man. Oh, it oh, mean pro-black man. Wait a I say, this is some bullshit. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> and so it's all about subjugating women. And what I found out, what I learned, because this was a transition through the acquisition of knowledge and paying attention to everything, paying attention to social media, paying attention to the world and everything. And I realized I said, you know what? This is a hierarchical system. Can't nobody deny that the white man, blonde hair, blue eyes, straight white man is at the top of the food chain. Everybody can agree, agree, agree to that. The black woman is at the bottom of this patriarchal society. In order for patriarchy to exist, it rests on women. It depends on women being behind the man and pushing the man up, right? So the hierarchical structure is black women on the bottom, black men on top of her, white women on top of the black man, and white men on top of everybody. It sounds like the like before the sixties. I think hmm. it might have changed. Well, it, well no, no. I think it might have changed since then. No, no, it's changing. The structure is changing. Yeah, the structure's got to be yeah, changing. Yeah, no, no, it's bit. changing. But that's but here's the thing: because in order, in order to crack the foundation, because no structure can survive on the cracked foundation, mm -hmm. right? Right. In order to kill this patriarchal system, guess what? You got to crack the foundation. Black women are the foundation. So what we got? Goldman Sachs right now, giving out money, right? That you have to crack the foundation and it's being cracked and black males are finding themselves left out because they depended on black women being on the absolute bottom for them to even have a leg up in this game. Black men are finding themselves very angry because black women are gaining their freedom and they're getting more power. You cannot uphold patriarchy with black women not on the bottom. So when you move her out the way, guess who fall? The black male fall first. He the first one to fall. 
That's the reason why they got all of this crap out here with the red pill and manosphere. Black women are our enemy because they depended on her being under the ground. And now she getting up. She getting up. Should uh, a black woman be on housing? You want to say that again? Should a black woman be on housing? Should the black woman be on housing? Okay. All right. So how do black women get on that in the first place? It all started with, you got to understand, again, when you put people at the bottom, right? This is, a, this is literally a universe 25 experiment on steroids for human beings. So if y'all are familiar with John Calhoun's Rat Utopia, he took four, four pairs of mice, okay, and he put them in this artificial utopia, gave them housing, gave them food, took them out of their natural environment, gave them everything. What did the mice do? They reproduced rapidly. They went from eight mice to over 2,200, and then it, it, it crumbled, okay? So all that happened, so that's what happened to black women and black males. They put them in these artificial environments. They had redlining, and they made, it, made sure that women and men were trapped into this. The male couldn't stop reproducing. He couldn't stop screwing the women. They kept getting pregnant, and guess what? Those children need somewhere to go. They need to be cared for. Somebody got to help the kids, right? So, but now that has slowed down dramatically. This is 2023. This ain't, this ain't 1978 or 1968 or 86 when this was at its peak, right? Yeah. It has calmed down. And guess what? A lot of these women, right, are opting out of having children, right? The women who do have the children, though, and who are on this government assistance, because these structures are changing, they got one or two options, right? Because they can either be programmed or retaught to, or to reintegrate, or they're going to be in the permanent underclass where they're, they're going to be slaves because all this stuff about to be removed is too many it's too many people and you can't keep incentivizing people to, to keep producing children, right? Especially if they're going to be consumers. Most of the people on the bottom are consumers. But even if they're consumers, they're also the, the greatest creators because necessity is the mother of invention. So you need people in need to create innovative things. So it's a catch-22. So... I can't say that they shouldn't be on there and I can't say that they should be on there because somebody has to care for the kids. So it's always a catch 22 with stuff like that. Facts, facts. You know, definitely a good book, man, of mice and men. Y'all go you know, read that. I, I, I'm just curious um, for you yourself. <laughs> it, it, you were married once. Yeah. Were you in love? No, no. I, me and my uh, husband married on the the pro black thing like i married him with what, a the mission statement like pretty yeah. much a mi mission statement right right because i was in that pro black thing all right let's let's be a power couple let's let's be an example for people to have you know a solid marriage let's do the pro black thing right that was a, that was the whole mentality in there so it was like when we got together i was like okay well um Let's see where your finances are, where my finances are, because we both drove trucks at that time, right? And so I didn't base, quote unquote, marrying off of love. We based it off of a mission and an objective, right? My ex-husband is not no bad, not, not no bad guy, but we're not compatible, right? We're not compatible at all, all right? We still co-parent, we still friends. So that's the reason why that marriage didn't work out. But no, I did not marry on a concept of quote unquote love. No. How, how long were you married? <sighs> Actively three years. Actively three years. Yeah. Um, and you said not compatible. I'm I'm curious, did it, where did it go wrong for after three years for you to say, Yeah, this ain't really working. I don't wanna just continue to try to grow this thing. Right. Well, a male is a male, regardless. <sighs> no, male is a male regardless. And so when we got when we got married, before we got married, I asked all of the questions that you're supposed to ask. I evaluated how he did his work, how he got along, because he, he was my trainer, right? So I evaluated all of that, right? And I asked about the finances. 
it all started when I get a <laughs> I get a IRS bill in the mail for six thousand dollars that he didn't tell me about. Right. Oh, damn. Yeah. So that was that was strike number one. Right. It's <laughs> a big strike. Then I was doing social media at that time. Right. And I let him know. I said, look, I do social media. This is my thing. This is what I'm going to keep doing. You, you don't have a problem with that. Right? No. When we got married, then he wanted me to stop doing social media and trying to control how I express myself. And it got to the point where I started to lose myself. And people was like, Princella, you ain't the same person that you was right. before you got married. And so it was hindering who I am at a soul level. And then I got pregnant, which I wasn't ready to be pregnant. And that that's a whole nother different story. But um, I had to leave my career. Right. Yeah. Everything that I didn't want. Right. And it, my life was being taken away from me. Right. And then I had to be a stay at home mom. And that killed me. I couldn't stand that because that ain't even my personality. Yeah. Right. And then I got into a real estate and it was like I'm trying to I'm trying to have him you know, be a part of this is like he not even trying to help. It's like he want to watch TV while I'm doing all this extra work to 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 get out of this situation. I want. So it got to, it got so much to a head because he wanted this. Idealistic life that like a lot of y'all men want. I just want to go home to work and she stay at the house and take care. That ain't the life I want. I don't like that. I'm a I'm a go getter. I'm a mover. I'm a shaker. I, I got a I got an enormous personality and I need to be doing what exactly what I'm doing now. And he couldn't handle that. So it's like, listen, this is it. You want you want me you want me to give you a ring back? I give you the ring back. I don't need to keep it. Right. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, so you you end up um you end up not even fucking with the male race no more. Like you're like right. you're like I don't even, I'm not even dealing with men no more. Right. No. R, R, R. Kelly made a famous song, or I don't know how famous it was, but he made a song was. One one man can make a woman hate all men. Well, see, Do you I feel hate. that? Did a man cause you to just go full anti man? No, like coming to the realization and accepting y'all for who y'all are is anti who I am because what drives relationships with me is emotional, mental, and spiritual connection. The male cannot connect with a woman on that level. He can't. It's always about controlling, dominating, and conquering her. It's it, and it's never peace. It's never it's never none of that. And since I have understood the nature of a male, I just came to the conclusion like the type of relationship that I want, I realize it ain't never coming from a male. It ain't never coming from a male. So a man who um let's say is um is uh he he can't have kids. He can't, you know, he can't produce. Um, let's say he can't even get it up. Do you feel like that man's incapable of? Like if he's not driven by sex or nothing, he's like, I'm not even worried. About, I don't care about sex, but I love you. Well, he got other issues. And yes, <laughs> you know, he do. That's the truth. Because he here's the thing. Issues. That's, you know, I got my book, 41 Shades of Men. That's actually a type of man in my book. Because here's the thing, the thing that really drives a male and makes him him is his his high levels of testosterone and his ability to produce kids. His, that's where his virility comes from. Mm. When he loses that virility, it's almost like he loses life and he becomes docile and he don't have no he don't have no real drive, no real vision anymore. And and sometimes these dudes are apathetic, mm. you know what I mean? They, they, they you know, so no, it, it's it's never a win-win with a man because it's always a problem, right? It's never from y'all's core that y'all just want to live in harmony with a woman. Y'all brain don't even function like that. It just don't, <laughs> you know. I'm curious. Um, have you ever had the urge or want to, um? I don't want to say be a man, but feel what a man feels no. sexually. Hell no. Uh -uh. You never you never wanted to see what it feels like. No. You, you were never curious to see what it feels like to stick a, a penis in a vagina and no. that sensation. You never mm -mm. you never wondered about it. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. No. Do you despise it or something like? like no, y'all. No, it's not. No, uh-uh. No. Uh -uh, no. Why? Why would I enjoy being? It, it I must enjoy be something being, that drives us for you. Like, what is it about that? That just makes us cause no. wars and 
kill and, and you know, just territorial. Nah. And you Mm-mm. never just was curious about what feeling does it give you to have that? Mm-mm. No, I don't. I'm more curious about y'all's brain wiring as opposed to a feeling. I'm, I'm, I'm more concerned about what's going on here. Right. And so I don't need to understand how I feel. I don't need to. Un- I understand. I know y'all's brain so well that I really understand that men really do live in hell. The average male, <laughs> the average male is too dumb to be able to convey to women why a man's life is harder than a woman's. It's not because the quote unquote external world is so hard. It's literally how his brain is wired that makes him so empty on the inside and makes things so hard. It's so hard for men to control their sex urges. It's so hard. Especially if we're rejected. Yeah. If we're rejected 40, 50 times, 99% of the time, that's, that's probably hard. It's very hard. But here's the thing. Men, the male has to be taught and trained how to even accept rejection because validation, men depend heavily on validation from women because that's his that's his only sense of importance or feel good. So the matrix has created other artificial ways for a male to feel valuable, needed and 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 worthy so being at the top of your game in sports makes a male feel valuable this is the most critical aspect for a damn male it's the most critical aspect so if if a male doesn't have anything else going for himself he has no vision no goals no anything else he's heavily dependent on a woman to validate his existence if he don't get that his anger, his loneliness, his frustration is going to boil to. I remember a dude put his hands on me because I told him well, I wasn't interested. He came up to me and he was like, uh, yo, can I get your number? I looked at him. I said, no, thank you. I- I'm not interested. He put his hand up to me and said, fuck you then, bitch. I ain't want your ugly ass no way. Right. Men get violent when you do not validate them. And so. Men don't understand why women give their phone numbers. Ever since then, any dude that asked me for my phone number, I gave it to him, right? Because I'm not trying to die over telling you no, right? I'm not trying to get hit because I told you no. So once I give you my phone number, it's cool. I'm just never going to pick up. And guess what? Eventually they stop calling. That's just, I mean, that's how it go. But men don't even think about what women go through and so I was intrigued to hear Bow Wow when he got here and he was like man the fellas ruined it for me with the club scene it's the fellas right male groupies now think about what women go through if Bow Wow saying that what you think women go through I know it's bad yeah (laughs) it's bad yeah Shout out to Real Street Stars, nigga. Moolah. Hey.